Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Um, Saturday the wife suggested that uh, we get our respective benches out and uh, do some hobby and uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, she, um, she does uh, card making and scrapbooking, basically just works with paper and photos and she's really very good at it. I mean she uh, produces some stunning stuff and with um, stamps, um, <clears throat> uh, powders and inks and unlike myself where I you know build a model and uh, the designs in front of me and uh, obviously the way you should paint it's in front of me. She does take inspiration from magazines but uh, at the same time it is her creation and it is uh, there's some stunning uh, results which I'll have to show you sometime. Um, I'll have to see if she wants to make a selection or something for me to, to do a video on. So I was trying to decide what to do. I could continue with some of the other kids, but I've been itching to go back and do something um, 172nd, 176th scale. And as you know, I did um, Matchbox Monday on this kit, um, I think it was back in March now. And this is a kit that I didn't have when I was a kid. So I've been chomping a little bit to get this done. Now, I wanted it to be um, almost like a, a mojo builder again, um, where it's just something I put together, paint and, and, and decor. Um, so I didn't want the complication of the uh, French camouflage patterns for these two tanks. Now I think as I mentioned uh, in the um, review, uh, you can do this, the, the char B in an all grey um, colour for um, a French tank in northern France 1940 and then you can do the Renault FT17 in um, Panzer Grey as a, a Luftwaffe um, vehicle and that was the intention but of course doing that means that I won't be able to um, put them on the diode that's, that's provided because they're two completely different periods of the war. So I'm going to have to come up with something uh, a bit different and uh, we shall see what that will be. So the next time you see these tanks, hopefully uh, one of them, um, or perhaps both of them, will be constructed. So I'll catch you in a bit. Right, so an update on the FT-17 and the Char B. Um, the FT-17 is, is together, but I wanted to give you a heads up on a, an issue that I have or have had with this kit um, and I'll show you that now. So it's to do with the rubber band tracks. Uh, these have got to be the worst tracks that I have had on one of these tanks. Um, it's not so much the detail on them it's um, I think a bit of a mistake that uh, Matchbox have made when they produce them I'll show you where it is so here's the track for the FT-17 yeah and it's the, the standard thing you've got to loop this end through this hole so you do that now I don't know what it is <clears throat> but the track won't lie flat it just will not lie flat and the other problem you've got I don't know whether you can see, uh, see you've got some detail on the underneath there yeah and then on the other end you've got your your slot I think what's happening is that this sorry this detail on this end won't sit flush with the with that uh, with that end there, you can see that rectangle where it's supposed to sit in. I don't think it sits flush. The other problem you've got is that you see the um, the hole. Well, either side of that hole, I think this the rubber is um, it's just not rigid enough, and so there's a tendency for it to bend when you try to put the track uh, together. So the way I got round that was I snipped off a 
I snipped off this bit at that point and then what I did was I cleaned uh, this this bit here so all I'd got was a, a part of the track from there to there and it was only the width the same width all the way through so these angled pieces either side were, were cut off and then <clears throat> I'll show you the piece I've done so you see the insert here that is the part I snipped off okay so then what I did was or all I did was I glued this part to one of these road wheels just there and then I glued the other end to the other road wheel just there so it doesn't actually um, so it just butts up to each other in effect you don't ha you don't have them secured by locking into each other and that's all I did uh, to try and get around that issue now there is a slight gap um, which I can use some filler or something to try and fill that and, and get around that but that's the only way I could uh, figure that out um, I've just noticed I managed to bend I bent the gun on that uh, the only other thing I've done with these tracks is I've super glued underneath here, here, here and here and then I, I just pressed down on the track to, to give you tonight uh, it looks like there was some weight there I keep getting out of shot, I am sorry just to give some idea of weight there um, so all I, I've got to fit the other track to this side now and I'll do exactly the same thing I did try stretching the track a bit on on this one just to try and get it to, to fit together and, and butt up together so I'll have to do the same for this uh, but apart from that not a bad build so the next time you will probably see this build is when the char B is put together okay guys so I'm uh, I'm back um, both tanks have been uh, fully constructed now no real issues with this kit at all the uh, rubber band tracks work much better um, the usual construction of um, slipping one end of the track into the slot and then rotating it and pulling it so that it um, makes a complete track worked well and I just super glued, uh, super glued that so it stayed and uh, again when I fitted the track over the um, road wheels and whatever it didn't, um, there wasn't a lot of tension so it didn't have the usual problem of pulling the um, drive sprocket um, out which can sometimes happen if the uh, rubber band tracks are too tall the only real problem with the char b was this plate here um, in the construction what they would have you do is uh, you fit the, the bottom and the two sides and the gun is fitted when you put um, all this together so the top isn't on on there and this front plate isn't there so then the next phase what you do is you fit the the deck and you fit this plate now what happens is um, because of the way it's shaped it's difficult to push it between this front plate um, which comes with the deck and this um, this side of the vehicle which you've already put on the the build um, but if you persevere you can get it to click into place and it does fit nicely the other thing that they don't show too well on the instructions is that this plate actually goes be behind um, I think this is the um, like the drive uh, shaft for these wheels here so it fits behind that and it also fits behind another uh, I think it's another drive shaft or just a support um, that's here when you're trying to fit it, it has a tendency wanting to, to fit between these two parts but what you've got to do is slip it in behind and then when you push it down it will click into place quite nicely um, I did manage to get this gun to go up and down I don't know whether it still can yeah it still still moves that's good um, I think the turret's fixed no I can move the turret as well which is nice so 
The Char B was a bit more of a convoluted, convoluted build than the FT-17. You had to think about it a bit more. Um, but it, it's all good in the end. So the next phase is to get some primer on these and I'm hoping to get down the garage now and get the primer on them. So when you next see these it'll probably be when they're, um, they've been undercoated and they've got the um, first coat of paint on or something and perhaps the tracks have been painted and possibly even when they've been decalled but we'll see. So I'll catch you in a bit. Right so the painting's been done now as you can see everything has been block painted. I'm sorry about the, uh, the lighting. Um, I'm having to find a different part of the house in order to to get this part of the video done. So the Char B is finished in Vallejo's um, dark grey which is 70994 and I've actually seen a photograph on is it Pinterest where this tank has been a obviously the the real thing has been abandoned and this colour looks about right so I was surprised to see French tanks in this colour the FT-17, as you know, is going to be uh, is painted up as a um, captured French tank being used for um, internal security by a, a Luftwaffe division. So that's been finished in Panzer Grey, which is Vallejo's 70995. The tracks have been painted using um, MIG pigments, um, rust and um, I've just kind of tried to vary that a bit. Obviously I'll try and do a bit more once the decaling has been done and we start getting to the weathering process. So the next stage is to put some gloss varnish on these in order to put the decals on and then we will seal those and then it'll be on to the, uh, to the weathering. So these will probably be finished the next time you see them. So the build of these two tanks is now complete. So displaying them both together in a context for a diorama I thought might be quite difficult. But I came up with an idea um, and I'm calling it Miniature Matchbox Museum and I'll uh, just get it for you now. So here it is guys, I'm um, sorry about the glare um, but uh, I've, I've tried to blotted out but it's, uh, it's not having it at the moment. So as you can see this is quite a straightforward diorama. Um, I've used a, a picture frame. This is a, a piece of cork that's been uh, cut to the internal dimensions of the, of the frame. What I did then was I sprayed it with um, um, body panel primer black uh, which is uh, coarser than the stuff I usually use and then I sprayed that with um, grey primer which is an automotive primer again and then after that I used a, a lacquer over it to give it uh, the shine. Now um, perhaps it's a bit uh, too shiny but uh, I was trying to give that impression that you see at quite a few museums especially um, the military ones uh, that have got um, vehicles that may be leaking oil and all that that, uh, that the floor in there is, is that kind of state in order to protect it a bit the, uh, the figures are from Backman, um, they're actually um, uh, railway model figures. Uh, I did enhance them a bit, uh, only very slightly, and that was to put some, uh, put a wash over perhaps this, this guy's jacket, just to, a, a brown wash, just to get in the folds and whatever. I put a black wash on this guy's trousers to try and get some folds as well. Um, and uh, I did do some work on this, this chap here as well. Um, so the most uh, expensive part of this uh, was possibly the figures. Uh, all in all they cost me only £22 because I, I got three sets because of the variation I needed. Um, the, these, uh, I don't know what you call, the, the rope stands. They were made out of a hole punch some uh, evergreen and then I got some wire and created these uh, the, the upstand part and just created eyes in those. This is a piece of um, like um, electric wire 
that comes on a roll. And what I wanted to try and achieve there was uh, to give the impression that the rope's going off in both directions, a continuation, uh, which was why I needed to kind of mess around a bit to try and get all these uh, vehicles in. This priest, for instance, um, uh, it uh, just about fit in there. So again, it gives a, an idea of continuation of vehicles further on. Uh, so, uh, just a fun little diorama, as I say, to try and uh, show off these two vehicles, which are, which are now complete and added to the collection. And I say they're complete, and I just looked at this one, and I haven't painted the aerial, so I'll have to do that after. Um, but apart from that, um, I'm hoping there's nothing else that's uh, not not done on these. The other builds you've seen before, the Sherman, the Churchill, the 234, and as I say, the Priest. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this project. Uh, thanks uh, ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.